Welcome to Your Money, Your Life, our personal finance podcast focused on improving your life through financial wellness, brought to you by Black Enterprise Digital. I'm your host, Alfred Edmond Jr. On each episode of Your Money, Your Life, we address the topics and issues you deal with every day as you strive to make the most of your money and the best of your life by discussions and insights with the top experts on everything from decoding your financial behavior and achieving financial freedom to conquering debt, that's a big one for most of us, and creating a legacy of multi-generational wealth. On this edition of Your Money, Your Life, we'll address one of the most important topics we want to know how to achieve as we pursue maybe what's the ultimate measure of financial wellness, which is creating multi-generational wealth. We're going to talk about the key strategies for leaving a financial legacy. And I'm thrilled to say that once again, we have the perfect expert with us to have this insightful and encouraging conversation. The Reverend Dr. DeForest B. Suarez Jr., faith leader and pastor, the creator of the D-Free Financial Empowerment Movement, and the author of D-Free, Breaking Free of Financial Slavery, which I consider an absolute must read, a life-changing book, if you do it, <laughs> what the book tells you to do. Uh, welcome to the show, Dr. Suarez, and thanks for being here. Well, thank you so much, Alfred, and thank you for continuing your promotion of this conversation. We, we really have not had sufficient conversations about money in the African-American community, and of course, Black Enterprise has been in the vanguard for years, but recently, you've expanded such that not only will corporate um, representatives and corporate executives gravitate, but you've broken down now financial issues to to the level where everybody everyday people can can grasp it so thank you well we're in, you know we're in the same vineyard <laughs> trying to bear the same fruit so i appreciate that from you so let's start with um, my favorite part of, of your story which is some of your personal experiences that led you on a path that i don't think they thought you would end up being on but that led to the creation of d free talk about your own personal relationship and experiences with money um, as, as a young man, as a, as a faith leader, that, and, and how that led to you deciding that this was something you, that you needed to do. Well, well, thanks for letting me start there because when you called me an expert, I kind of got chills again <laughs> because, you know, an expert is normally someone who has studied and graduated and got degrees. I learned about money by being broke. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> hey, so my expertise amen. came from running for bill collectors, sending checks for payments without signing them as a trick to buy time, <laughs> living above my means, driving a car that had that used so much gas I couldn't afford the gas. I mean, I, I was raised in a middle class home, but when I was 19, I got my first credit card. Mm. And I lived on those credit cards. I got my second credit card, I charged furniture for my apartment, and I was always behind. I was always broke. I had to borrow money from my dad, and I, you know, my dad said, why are you always borrowing money for you from me? And I'd say, well, Dad, I don't know where my money goes. And he'd say, it doesn't leave home while you're sleeping. You know, you have to, your money goes where you take it. So, so living that way for 13 years, and then when my grandmother died, black woman in Brooklyn, no education, six kids and an invalid husband, she left us three houses paid for. Wow. The first house I owned, I inherited from a black woman who didn't have civil rights, who didn't have a college degree. And I said at her, at her grave, Shame on me if when I die, all I have to leave is credit card bills. And oh. I promised God, I promised myself, I promised my future that I was going to learn everything my grandmother knew to get on my feet, and within five years, I was debt free. You know, what's interesting about that, and it may, it may have been your story that inspired it. I did a post for blackenterprise.com um, called, it was, the theme of it was the old school lessons about money that our parents and grandparents knew. Right. And, and how they got so much further with the dollars they made than we did, though we may be making four or five times the salary or the income that they did. And, and my mother used to always look at me strange, like, what do you mean you're, you're having trouble making ends meet? Well, yeah, I mean, th that was my father's mother I was talking about. Oh, my, yeah, right. my mother's mother was a maid. She worked for Rich Whites in, in, on the other side of town. She always had money. She kept uh, dollar bills in a handkerchief in her bosom. Mm, right, <laughs> she yeah, a couple yeah. of dollars, she always had it. Yeah. She kept the big money rolled up in a stocking under a dress. I mean, wow. so, so we called the bosom the credit union and the, the stocking the bank account. <laughs> <laughs> but grandma always had money. Huh. And, and it was because people like my grandmother, your, your, your ancestors, did not treat money the way we do. They used money strategically to help them reach their goals. So in many ways, my expertise is really trying to get our people to be, to be what we used to be. 
I mean, we used yeah, to save money. Right. We used to save money. We used to buy we insurance. We used to not spend unless we actually had the money to pay for it. We didn't go yeah. shopping. We went to buy something. Right. You know, shopping was not an or extracurricular activity. activity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but there were no malls then, you know, with 500 stores. There were no credit cards. I mean, you right. know, our generation is the first generation to assume credit cards as a normal part of our lives. We were also the first generation that was even allowed to know our own credit scores. Exactly. Access to a credit report. That, you know, I tell my kids all the time, you are the first people born with that information That's exactly or access right. to that information. So we're, we're starting from scratch in large measure, uh, and we're starting at a time when marketing is, is everywhere. You yes. know, and, and you go on your phone and, and the shoes that you looked at three days ago show up when you're looking for a Bible verse. Right. So, so we have to teach our people, and, and it was my, my experience of doing so many things wrong as compared to my grandmothers who didn't have civil rights, didn't have education, that I decided to, to live the way they used to live. Mm -hmm. So I, I, uh, I moved out of my bachelor apartment after my grandmother died. I sold my, my late model car, bought a two-door car with no air conditioning. Mm -hmm. I sold all of my furniture. I, I bought furniture, $3,000 worth of furniture. You pay $22 a month you know, for wow. 89 years. Wow. So I paid off my furniture 87 years early by selling it. Right. I went to my mom's house. I was a pastor of a church. And none of my church members knew this, but I was living in my mother's house, sleeping in a sleeping bag for six months, taking all of my income, paying off my debts, and, and putting my life back together. Wow, so I my book, that part of your story. Oh, yeah. So wow. my book basically was my effort to write down my process for my church members because by 2005, you know, my church had 6,000 members, and a lot of them were living in 2005 the way I had been living when I was in my 20s. Wow. So sharing wow. What, what, what I learned, what God did for me with the people that he sent me to serve. So ultimately, this led you to launching, and I was, you had a Black Enterprise included in the beginning. Right. Um, and I, I was and you're still person. included. Yeah, no, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So I, 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 I love have that being a part of our legacy as, as, because we're, getting, we're in this, on the same um, mission. Right. Um, but it led you to launch the Defree Financial Movement. That's tell, right. our, tell our audience what that's about, uh, how it can be done, and where it is today. Well, I discovered in my own life, my own experience, that the three barriers to being well financially, and, and being well is critical because I had headaches, I, was, mm. I, I missed work. I mean, my whole life was impacted negatively by the way I was handling money. Yes. So, so the first three things I had to do was this. One, I had to stop using credit cards. I mean, I was spending credit cards. I was using credit cards as if it was income. You were abusing. So I made $25,000 a year income, mm -hmm. but my credit card allowed me to charge $5,000. So I lived as though I made $30,000. Yes, yes. So I stopped using credit cards. Pay as you go. And that's, that's the first D, get out of debt. Yes. Then I was so sloppy. I was disorganized. I didn't manage my affairs. I was paying late fees because if you make payments late to anybody, you pay a fee, yep. $35 here, 25 and it adds up. I mean, Americans spend billions of dollars a year just on late fees. Mm. So I started getting organized and paying my bills on time. And then, you know, the word is delinquent, the deficits. I, I, was, I was living above my means wow. because I, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to get a big church to get a big car. So I bought a big car when I had a small church. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to look like a preacher driving a big car, wearing nice clothes, but I was broke. I couldn't help my mom when my father died. He was 47, she was 44. I was 24, but I was too broke to buy her a hamburger if I had to. Wow. So fortunately, my dad had insurance, and so my, my sister was all right, my mother was all right. But I, I just, I, I had to deal with my debt, my delinquencies, and my deficits. And when, when, I, when I stopped living above my means, when I stopped using credit cards, I started saving. That's deposits. That's what D free stands for. Okay get away from debt delinquencies and deficits, make deposits. I started saving money. When I had a flat tire and needed a new tire, I'd have to use a credit card. If my credit card didn't have enough room to buy a new tire, I had to borrow money from my grandmother. So, so I was making deposits in my own accounts, putting my name on deeds. I started buying real estate. Mm -hmm. The first house I inherited from my grandmother, the second house I bought with no money down. And then the third, of course, is living off dividends. I get checks now every month from my investments that are larger than my paycheck was when I was broke. Welcome back to Your Money, Your Life. I'm your host, Alfred Edmund Jr., with D Free Financial Movement founder, DeForest Suarez Jr. So, Dr. Suarez, 
What is DFREE? What is it today? Uh, you know, what have you created and, and how do people and organizations get involved? Well, DFREE is a curriculum. We have a book and a workbook. We have two meditations books. We have a couple of supplements aimed at specific populations, starting with senior citizens. And what my team does is we train people to use our curriculum and our strategy. Mm -hmm. So we're in 3,100 churches. Wow. We're working with 125 Delta Sigma Theta sorority chapters. Mm -hmm. And we work with a handful of community organizations around the country. And what we do is we produce uh, digital media, we produce podcasts, we produce articles, we produce blogs, and we give that information away to ensure that people that care about financial freedom have the tools and the strategy to help our people the way we did in the civil rights movement. Yes. You know, I was trained as a civil rights activist, and we would teach people how to protest, literally. I mean, protest is a science, it's an art, it's a skill. And now, instead of teaching people how to protest, we teach people how to be f well financially. So this, this goes right to my point and, and to what are things I want you to talk about now. It's, it's, we thought it was about, for many years, including here at Black Enterprise, that it was about financial information. Right. And it is, but it's not enough. It's really about helping people to change their lifestyle, financial lifestyle. So w with that in mind, w what, what is your, main advice to our audience about changing their lifestyle in order to leave a financial legacy. What does that mean to you as the founder of the D Free Movement? Well your lifestyle flows from your attitude. Mm -hmm. If I if 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 I believe that I must have a five hundred dollar shoes on my feet to make my feet <laughs> be significant feet, that then I'll I'll spend money on shoes that I can't afford to spend. And so what we deal with in D-Free really is the psychological, emotional, and spiritual aspects of how we handle money. So legacy starts here and here. It starts in the mind. You know, the Bible says to be changed by the renewing of our minds. Mm -hmm. The difference between us and our grandparents is that our grandparents did not feel that their pers personalities were driven by their possessions, mm -hmm. that their identity was rooted and grounded in their culture, in their faith, in their relationships with each other. But we have become not just African American. Right, right. I mean, no, the whole is culture is issue. consumed by marketing and by fads brands. and by brands. Mm -hmm. And when you can break that, I, I was addicted to neckties. I believed that I just needed neckties to be the kind of preacher I need to be. I mean, I was so addicted. I went to the store one time, bought a necktie, brought it home, and already owned it. I mean, that's a problem. <laughs> well, that is a <laughs> that, problem. But that was an attitude. Right. So I had to break out of that. And I discovered that just um, cutting back on buying new neckties every single month put me in a position by that time to give more money to my scholarship fund at my own mm. church. So it's, it's the way we think. And it's understanding that our significance does not come from our possessions. But Talk I a little bit more about going from debt to deposits, because right. th that, 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 that shift when it comes to leaving a financial legacy, if you're not making any deposits, there's no legacy to leave. There's none to leave. Listen, de debt is what we experience because of impatience. That's an attitude. Right. In other words, if I want a flat screen TV, it costs $2,000. If I can't wait until I have the cash, I use a credit card. Then I pay the credit card owner 18, 24% interest for the right to have it right now. Right. What my mother did was lay away. Yes. And so mama would put $10 on a $60 dress, and after she paid for the dress, she'd bring it home. we go out and put a credit card for the dress and bring the dress home, call it our dress, but it's not our dress until we pay for it. Right. So, so it's and an, we're often it's an for attitude. We wear anymore. Oh, please. Yeah. We'll pay $29.99 to a storage facility to hold stuff that we'll never see again. Oh. We pay for people to hold junk. So again, that, this it's idea of mentality. financial legacy is a mentality but it, you're hitting on a, a very important topic for me, which is the price of instant gratification That's versus right. the rewards of delayed gratification. And, and wealth an and attitude. legacy is That's about delayed gratification. That's a spirit. I tell all of my religious friends all the time, if God is a spirit, and the spirit of God, among other things, gives you patience. Yes. The fruit of the spirit includes patience yes. and discipline, which means that it's really a spiritual problem. Uh, when we see immigrants coming from all over the world, starting businesses, owning uh, donut shops, doing nails, th these people from the outside look like they're living humble lives. But what they're doing is making a priority developing wealth. 
And that underscores the idea of legacy because they may come in looking like that the first the generation that we see when they arrive, and then you look one generation, two generations later. The kids are going to Ivy League schools. Absolutely, absolutely. Paid for by money made from hot dog stands. <laughs> We're going to leave it right there. Thank you, Dr. Suarez, for being on the show and sharing yeah. your insights and all the great things that you're doing. We so appreciate it. We're definitely going to have you back on the show soon. Um, it, your work to help us all achieve a financial wellness. MyDFree.org. Oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> MyDFree.org. We're going to make sure that you guys get there. Um, it's an amazing program. It's an amazing program. Because again, there's a lot of sources of information. Right. There's not a lot of programs that will actually help you use that information to change your life. And In so, fact, I don't know if you know this, you can go through the entire D3 course online for free. I do know that, All right. but I'm glad our audience knows that now as well. Um, listen, um, again, go to myd3.org to get on the path to establishing your financial legacy for your family. Um, also, check out the podcast channel at blackenterprise.com to find your money, your life, and other podcasts from Black Enterprise editors, writers, and experts. And be sure to subscribe to Your Money, Your Life on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, or any other podcast directory. And if you like what you hear, we definitely want you to leave a five-star review and, of course, tell all your friends. This is Alfred Evan Jr. with Your Money, Your Life for blackenterprise.com. Thanks for listening. Come back for more next edition. Thank you.